I tried to make him a pseudo father. Jessica, I'm going to stop you there and ask you a question. This sexual assault you are talking about is from when you were younger, correct? Can she have a break? Really uh, some powerful words. And, and what you heard there was Jessica Mann, Harvey Weinstein's accuser, reading an email that she had written to her then boyfriend years ago. And, and in it, describing her relationship with Harvey Weinstein. All of this is very complicated. Harvey Weinstein is like the same age as her father. She described how her father dated uh, a woman who was younger than she was. She also talked about a sexual assault prior to the alleged sexual assault by Harvey Weinstein that was related to her community in the church. And in talking about how her parents didn't approve of her wanting, I guess, to be in the entertainment business, getting validation. I mean, all this is very complicated. So let's try to unwrap it, make some sense of it tonight. Joining us from our New York City studios, psychiatrist Dr. Ziv Cohen. Dr. Cohen, great to see you. Thanks for coming on tonight. Hi, good to be here. Well, let me start here because the, the first thing that I'm sure all the viewers are probably thinking about right now is, oh, my goodness, Jessica Mann. This is a woman who has daddy issues, okay? And I don't want to just, like, throw it away like it's not a big... This is a, this is a big deal. This is her life, right? And she's on the stand talking about it. But is there something to that, the relationship um, between her, potentially, and her father, and the way that she sees Harvey Weinstein, the man that she has a very complicated relationship with, but is also accusing of rape? Right. Well, I think that, um, you know, she has said it herself, um, you know, in, in, in that uh, transcript, she, she makes that connection in her mind. So I think that that's one important point. She's made that connection. The jury has heard that connection. She talked about her, I believe, psychological wounds. And so she is positioning herself with that testimony as a complicated person, a psychologically complicated person. She was saying that she um, had no agenda with him other than playing out her own psychology, something to that effect. And so uh, that certainly complicates the picture, I think, for the prosecution. Um, it does, of course, when you're talking about psychiatry and psychology, do we have evidence that people who come from difficult family circumstances can play that out in future adult relationships? Absolutely, we do. We do. And so the, I think that you hit the nail on the head by saying that this is very complicated. And of course, the prosecution doesn't want it to be complicated. The prosecution wants a very credible, believable victim with a very clean story. And now we're having the incredible complications that people can have in their lives kind of spilling out in an open courtroom. And that, you know, for better or worse, will cloud the jury's perception of her and her motivation and really Harvey Weinstein's culpability in the situation because it puts the focus on her motivation rather than on his behavior. So what should we take away from this? And this is the, this is the part that's difficult for viewers as they listen to this testimony and may very well be difficult for jurors as well. This complicated relationship. She's claiming a rape that's kind of like in the middle of this relationship. Things happen consensually beforehand. Things happen consensually afterwards. Um, she, she talks about it, it, admiring this guy or, or he validates me. I, 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 I like his approval. Um, how do we get to the truth? Is it possible? Let's start here first. Is it possible that you could be raped in the middle of all of these things that are going on in this relationship between this young woman and this older man? So that's certainly possible, and I think that, you know, it's important that we all keep in mind that we've traveled some distance as a society and as a culture when it comes to that. So, you know, it used to, there used to not be any statutes about marital rape, so it was legally impossible for a husband uh, to, to rape a wife. And, of course, we've come a long way from that. We understand that rape can happen in marriage, and, and rape can happen in any relationship. And really, technically, whether he was very nice to her for 99 days out of 100 and then on day 100 assaulted her doesn't change the fact that, if that's the case, that she was assaulted. So, but, but the issue in a courtroom, of course, is that a courtroom has a lot of theatrics. And also, 
a court, in, a, in a court, we have the legal standard of guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. So the defense strategy here is, uh, can we plant a reasonable doubt in the mind of the jury? And as you start to play out this complicated relationship you know, in the ears of the jury, and you're hearing how complicated she was and that she also benefited from the relationship psychologically and, and maybe sometimes materially as well, and that she pursued the relationship, that she pursued him, that she gave him her telephone number five different times after it was changed. Uh, when they hear all that, it may be enough to plant a reasonable doubt in the mind of the jury. And you know, we could talk about what the percentages are of beyond a reasonable doubt, but it's 90, 95% certainty is usually what people think of when they think of convicting somebody. And so all the defense has to do is try to cross that threshold of maybe 5% doubt that they're planting in the mind of the jury. So I think we have to think that what we heard from Jessica Mann in the last couple of days may have been damaging and problematic for the prosecution's case. All right. Um, there's been, uh, you know, another part of the defense is here, a lot of these people, some of the other witnesses didn't come forward right away, maybe didn't report it to police at any point. Um, Dr. Ziv Cohen is with us, but Dr. Ziv testified at the beginning of the case for the prosecution. I want to take a listen to a little bit of what she had to say. The vast majority of individuals who are sexually assaulted do not report promptly. The time it can range from days to weeks to months to years to report a sexual assault to never. It is according to the Bureau of Justice Statistics. It is the most underreported crime. All right, Dr. Ziv Cohen, is Dr. Ziv right there that uh, sexual assaults are underreported, like really underreported? Yeah, I think that Dr. Ziv is, is absolutely right about that. And I think uh, because of the problematic, the, the kind of complicated nature of the relationship that the relationships that Harvey Weinstein had with his victims, uh, you know, the prosecution has really anticipated that this would be a line that the defense would take by emphasizing the complicated nature of the relationship and blurring boundaries. Um, and so, you know, trying to blur boundaries in the mind of the jury. And so the um, prosecution has anticipated that by bringing a forensic psychiatrist, bringing Dr. Zeev to say that this is not atypical in terms of behavior of victims. Um, I think that you know, they're probably going to score some points with that testimony. But what we always have to remember, and I say this as a forensic psychiatrist myself, is that a jury is a lay jury. They're a non-expert jury. And a jury is, at the end of the day, going to think about their personal experience, their life experience. And they're going to think about whether something seems credible, seems probable, whether it passes the smell test. And so they, the prosecution has tried to anticipate the problems in the case by having Dr. Zeev testify, but whether that really inoculates the jury to everything they've heard in the last couple of days from Jessica Mann is, is an open question. All right.